All right, family, so we want to welcome you to Hypes Media. My name is Joyce Isaac, and today we are privileged to have one of the biggest pastors in the history of gospel music by name, Erabna. Erabna, you. you are welcome. Thank you very much. How has the journey been? It's been good with grace. It's been smooth. With the eyes of human, it's been hard, but God has been faithful. How are you? I'm doing good. We see you go and come, go and come. How do you do it? Hi. It's it's just about planning and management. Mm. Uh, Bible says that by wisdom a city is built, mm. and by understanding it is sustained. So it's just a matter of having wisdom on what to do and when to do what, mm. and it's just by the grace of God. We know you from Ajim in Kwadis. Take us through your journey. How did it all start? <laughs> so I, I have been singing since childhood. I'm sure you've heard mm. back from everybody else. Been singing since childhood. I remember in uh, class five. So we say year five, class five. I I was singing solo and all of that. But in 2005, I, I made a weird decision to go to the studio it wasn't really planned. Mm. I think it was an accident or something, the, what I think. Mm. So I went to the studios of Nasi to make my song professionally. I was in a studio for three years, the ups and downs, looking for a manager, looking for a producer and all that, because I went unprepared, unadvised, uninformed. So after three years in the studio, um, I was supposed to be helped by somebody in my family. So Nasi with Mr. Kabli mm -hmm. went to talk to him to help me then. It was supposed to be that 100,000, so 10,000 10, cities now to produce the song. Uh, the person gave us a go ahead to stop preparation towards it, who gave us the money. It was supposed to be in August. And when August came, the person said, I'm not doing it again. Mm -hmm. So by then, Nasi had put in his money already with gone out to buy stuff, started shooting video with my holy and all that. Were you disappointed? I was, and I still am. But yeah. you know that Bible says that all things work together yeah, for well. good. And I'm happy he didn't help. Because as I sit here, I keep saying that nobody can say I made a rabbi. Mm. Sometimes God wants to take the glory for himself. And he will stop. There are people that would want to share his glory with him. He said, my glory I share with no one. And I know sitting here, if I look back, I know that person would have claimed glory. A glory to the Most High God. Nobody has a hand in this beauty that he is working out on me. So from that time, uh, we released that Jimmy Wah. 2009. And it was huge. Huge. I didn't even expect that. <laughs> so the song became huge when I didn't even know. Mm -hmm. So I was a star without knowing. And the reason people hardly knew my face was because of the incident surrounding the production. Mm -hmm. So Nasi's money had gone into it already. So when he said no, then Nasi had to do what he can do to get his money back. So man's got to do what man's got wow. to do. And he did it. And then the song went boom, even without the video. video. So from then, the song became a big one, even when the video was out. And for the reason we didn't do more of video promotion. Here we are. So after enjoying the fame, the stardom, and then you went to hibernation. It is like Eve eating the apple. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? Because, because I I tasted stardom, I tasted the limelight, and I tasted the fulfillment of doing what makes you happy. Music is is I keep saying that music is that go to that is always there when nobody is there. So after a Jimmy and Kwa, the Kama Kama album, two thousand and nine. 2013, I released a second album on my own strength and family. Some family school, yeah. but it didn't go well. But and then um, it was Is it hard. that you didn't meet the right people to help you on that project? Um, if I look back, I think that um, there was not good planning, there was not good management, and I was not in a good position because even at that time, I wasn't mentally okay. Mm -hmm. I was going through a lot already. And I say that um, planning is very vital to success. Yes, comparing what I have today, comparing what I know today to what I had then and what I knew then, 
um, if I had the help and the support and the team I have now, then uh, it would be great. But I'm thinking also that Bible says in Isaiah chapter 60, verse 22, he says, when the time is right, I, the Lord, will make it happen. So that time wasn't right. I'll just say, so it's not just the people or the back planning or the strategies that were no good. It was just that it was not timed. It was not timing. It was not his time. That's so. so after 2013, your second mm. album. But another one. I didn't give up. <laughs> Last <laughs> shot. It was hard, but 2016, I released the third album. I called it All I See. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't want to wait for anybody to tell me I'm a good songwriter because I am. Mm. I'm a very good songwriter and composer. Um, I sing from my life experience with grace and mercy. So I sing from a deep place. So the songs were good. The album was good, but still, it didn't go. Even that one was worse. Even that one was worse. It didn't, it didn't go anywhere. So from that time, I decided it's over. I was tired of trying, and it looked as if everything I say goes into music and doesn't come back to me and I am very hard working I am very happy too. so I was doing a lot of other things so I'm thinking if I if I put this money I've put in music that didn't come back into selling something else bags of rice uh, folks anything ice creams I did before I thought I would have gotten the money back but I didn't know but he said who says lamentation chapter 3 verse 30 he says who says and it comes to pass when the Lord has not commanded? So it was just his timing. That one to come back. Mm. So then I said it's over. Ooh, you finally it's, gave up. It's done deal. It won't work. If it won't be, it won't be. Just leave it. And that was when I gave up on music, music. Like, totally. I was looking for any other ways to make things happen for me. But music. I know you to be a very, very good songwriter. I am. So during the time of your hibernation. Were you still writing songs for other people? Some of the, yes. If I say yes, yes, but I won't mention anybody's name mm. because none of them has named me as a song, their songwriter. So I I write songs even in those times. What I do is I write songs with my life. See the way I'm happy this mm. moment. If I open my mouth, I'll sing happy songs to you and that's it. So I was still writing songs. I was still writing songs. Giving to some people. I had a, a manager that was taking songs from me for his artists and other people. So I was still writing. I just decided, I, I, I thought I might, if it's not picking for me, I might as well just sell it and, mm, and finish money. the money. And that's it. That's what I thought. But. So I was still writing. So what made you finally decide to come back again? What was the motivation about it? Heaven. Heaven rescued me. God rescued me when I was at my deep end and I thought all hope was lost. So I always say that I think hope and peace in Christ and mm. I mean it. I was at that point, I thought nothing was going to work for me. I thought that that was the end of the journey for me. So I'm talking to you, whoever you are watching me, if you think it's the end of the journey for me, for you, I'm here to remind you of someone who hasn't even started with you yet. So I decided I, won't, I wasn't doing music again. But the songs won't stop coming, like you know. So the songs kept coming. And then this particular song thus far, it was, it was a beautiful piece that came all of a sudden. So one of the days, Sha mm -hmm. gave, sent me a message and said, I want to talk to you. And then when I called him, he says, Hey, Rabna. <laughs> so literally, he's been the one working on those songs that were bought for me. For people. Yes. And he and I said, Sha. In my head, I was just saying something for him to stop talking about. And I said, Sha. And your papa nakasawa get current ones there. I just said that so that he would stop bothering me. And then he started talking and said, uh, he knows, he doesn't know why. And then my mother had died. So I'd made up my mind mm -hmm. not to come to Ghana again. The reason was that I wanted to live in a denial. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't want to see, yeah. I didn't want to see my mother's graveside to, to say that, oh yes, he, she's dead. I wanted to think that, oh, I left my mother in Ghana. Uh, the last time I saw my mother was 2019 and she's still there. 
So coming to Ghana will make me face reality for mm. something I wasn't ready for. So my coping mechanism that time was to just behave like nothing happened, never come to Ghana. So thinking of music in its sense made me think, I have to go to Ghana. Mm. I'm not ready for it. And then Sha said, oh, that may be it. And mm. he, he talked to me. Funny enough, soon as Sha finished talking to me, somebody else who is now my manager got in, in touch fact. with me and said, this is the next day, we really need you more. Mm. <laughs> it, it was funny because um, I knew this person through my music mm. years back and he wanted us to do music and I said, fine, that's New Star Records. Mm. And that's the beginning of the better things he's doing in here. So he rescued me and pushed me into rescuing our rescue music. So, yeah. In the ocean, we had then uh, you're coming back, you deciding to do music professionally again, you know, and uh, a rebete to the new Arabna we are seeing. The new Arabna came to repeat the song. Because I've had songs, I have songs. If you see the new me, um, I was scared of starting things. Mm. I had that weakness and I was clingy. So I keep saying that I could have a friend. I know this friend is terrible. But the fact that I have to leave this friend and look for a new friend was a big deal for me. That's the reason why when my mother died, I was clinging on to old memories mm-hmm. and I'm saying she's still there. So in, in my quest to move forward, I had to face my fears. I cut my hair to start all over again. I did a lot of things to start all over again. Then I said to me, there were times because in my quest to make it in the music uh, industry, I thought, Oh, this one is doing this. Maybe that's why she's doing well. Oh, that one is doing that. Maybe that's how he's doing well. So I was just mixing up everything that will work for me. The singing voices that were not mine. Mm. Singing ways that were not mine. But in, in, in my next life, this was what I thought. My mother died and a lot of things changed, changed. with me. Because now I'm not that little girl that is protected by mommy. Mm. Auntie Mary is not there. Now, I'm that big woman that has two children to protect. Mm. I'm that big woman that has big ministry to protect. So if I am coming, I want to come like this. I told my manager. When my manager came and uh, met me, I had my permed hair and the rasters, and I told him that I want to go natural. I want to start over again. It was one of the ways to face my fears because I was scared of starting things. And so when I told him, he wasn't too sure what I wanted to do. So I say it here today. I had a vision of what I wanted my hair to be like, but I didn't have a firm idea. Then one day I went on Facebook and I chanced on a Hindu gift to his picture. And I said, manager, see in America, see in America, see in This is how it will be like. And how was his and I reaction? Said, and he said, no, that, then that's fine. So he he allowed me because all that time I had the braids on, but in my head, if I remove the braids, I'm going to cut my hair off and start going natural. And then I started. So coming back was like, you know, when Naaman went into the river and came out whole, that was me. So coming out of the trauma of loss, of disappointment everything. and everything that happened to me, I'm coming out with a new person. So I will say, I keep saying that my mother's death rebates something in me that I didn't think I had. So that's the reason for the rebirth. And if you see the rebirth, the rebirth album has everything that I can do. I am mm. a very good songwriter and composer. It's on there. You will mm. see from the songs. I have very beautiful voice. Um, at that point of my life, that I don't wait for somebody to tell to me, tell hey, Rab, now where are you? Because I went so down that when you give me compliments, oh, where for? Then I'm doubting in my head. Mm. I went down. I had a low moment to the point that when you're saying good things about me, I'm thinking in my, before I enter this place, I'm thinking they are talking about me. Mm. This is what my mental health got that bad. So I am at that point in my life that I don't need recognition uh, to feel important. I don't need uh, somebody's uh, validation. This is where I am. So I came with this and I've been like this. This hair, I do cornrow. I can leave my hair anyhow I want. Like you see this one today, I've done normal cornrow and I'm hooded up and I don't care. So long as I feel good and I'm happy and I'm in the right of God, and that's the reason for the river. A new me is born. Just the way you see it. <laughs> so after releasing Rebirth album, 
we saw you doing a concert, a musical concert to release the album. Mm-hmm. How was the concert? It was marvelous. It was beautiful. This is the doing of the Lord, and it's marvelous. You know, it was beautiful to think that after years and years, I've never had a main concert mm-hmm. like this. I've had luncheon and all that thing, and we didn't see it. So the biggest luncheon I had was at Jimmy. Because after mm-hmm. it, it's been Ooh. not good. But this far, and I've been in uh, outside the country for that long and I saw the beautiful love poured on me and after that day lots of them have never left me and they are warriors and they are supporting me oh it's it's the beginning of a beautiful thing I still feel I loved what happened so much love so much support and I saw God do his own thing in people's lives and I was happy I was discussing with someone today that if there's any award that we call digital promoter of the year. That should now be. Now, you're not take them. How do you do Come it? down. Come down. We'll be on the blue now. It's just me. It's just me. It wasn't like this is how it started. Mm. My management had this strategy. When the beginning they said to do this, do video, let me tell you. Because I am still moving out of that old mm. person. So when my chains were broken, mm. Me, today I've gone to the market. I've gone to the market everywhere. Ooh. Now I see it as a ministry. So I don't see myself. I say it and I mean it. I don't see myself as just a gospel artist. I'm a gospel artist and a gospel content creator. Mm. The reason is that somebody wakes up in the morning and feels sad and is going on TikTok. And she meets my song, my video, and feel changed, okay. feel touched. Yeah. The Lord Almighty's hand should touch him through my songs. And as I stand in that, as some in the UK, in the open, people will be looking at me and mm. will be shooting the videos and all that. And I tell myself, as I'm singing, even though they don't, the other time I went to this alphabet people's place, so you see their flags and all mm. that. And I'm thinking to myself, as I'm singing, let somebody hear Christ mm. and change. My agenda is spiritual, I keep saying. So everything, um, I do with a different intent. You do it for just promotion. But I do it for promotion and rescue. I'm on a rescue mission. So, oh, content, a uh, unity. I take it. I do it unapologetically. Name it. Yeah, see, yeah, well, yeah, the mouth. I'm the man. Heaven and man, Mary. Heaven and man. But they say, you need to answer your science. Oh, my yeah, God. You too. Because People do it now. Every day. Just a, a day when releasing content on all your platforms, you need to. 